Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another live broadcast of Jacob's Ladder. I am your host, Jacob Israel, and I am happy that you are here on the eve of what most people call Easter. Unless, of course, you are from the White House. From what I hear, they have declared it is another day, but that is, my friends, not the point for today's show. If you take a look at that thumbnail, there is much for us to discuss. There is a lot that is going on. All of this is happening. And to all of you, I say shalom, because I see you all here. So many people already. You feel it too, right? This is one of those shows. This is one of those shows, Carrie. Thank you for the super chat. Welcome. I'm Jacob Israel. I take world events. I speculate. And then I just kind of share what it is that I see. And there's a lot to see right now. We have the Great American Eclipse, which is coming to its conclusion. This is the second eclipse that makes a X over the United States. A Tav, if you will. The last letter. This is an important thing. Because many years ago I said it was going to divide. It was going to judge. It was going to be a time of judgment and division. Division from what, you may ask? Well, you're going to find out on today's show. But there's a lot of other things, otherworldly things, that are happening at the exact same time. A lot of it is very, as we say on the program, sus, with a capital S. We're going to get into all of it. I mean, for crying out loud, people are seeing demon faces now. We got two sets of cicadas that are blossoming and blooming and emerging. The 13 group and the 17 group, like never before, trillions. It's going to be a locust apocalypse. Back in the day, back in the day, like 1776 or so. That's when the last time it happened, and a lot of people thought that it was that biblical plague. But there's a lot of other things that are happening that I've now just come to terms with. I'm going to share it with all of you. From pop culture, I'm going to go down the, uh, the WrestleMania route. Because, of course, The Rock has right now has, uh, is humbling the American nightmare. Judgment has come to America indeed. Take a look at the thumbnail one more time before we get started. I want to welcome all of you. I hope that you have hit that like button already. Or I hope that you are ready to go. Because this is one of the things that you're going to have to pay attention to. Now, with this eclipse, it is a time for people to, well, as they're saying, they're saying they're using it to study the effects of the eclipse on the ionosphere. Weird. NASA's sending three rockets up before, during, and after the eclipse. Hence, you saw the three rockets. But what a lot of people don't know, unless you're following me on X, because I shared it on X, and then a lot of people caught on and realized that it's incredibly interesting what they named this mission. This mission, which is supposed to be sending these to the uh, moon's shadow. But it's named after an ancient god known as Apophis. That's right, Apophis. Apophis, Apep, for short. Apophis, we've talked about it. This is a near-Earth asteroid that is a city killer. And they say that it will just miss by 2029. But when I started covering Apophis and others, I told people that even if it misses, it doesn't matter because such a large body, which is unheard of because we have gotten so many different asteroids and, and, and inter interstellar, um, like uh, Amuamua, all of these interstellar visitors, which people say, oh, it's a craft, or it's this, or it's that. But there's a lot of weird things that are bouncing around and coming our way. So, when they're sending up three rockets during the eclipse into the moon's shadow, the shadow, which is something I've talked about on the show, it's interesting. But the space agency's project, known as the Atmospheric Perturbations Around the Eclipse Path, 
just uh, they just took the name Apophis. They took Apep and they tried to come up with something. That's what I'm thinking. We'll investigate how that drop in sunlight and temperature will affect the Earth's upper as- atmosphere. But not just the atmosphere. Communication. Communication. This is big. Very big indeed. APEP, and it's right there in Forbes, and it's also on NASA's homepage, is named after the serpent deity from the ancient Egyptian mythology, the nemesis of the sun god, known as Ra, the serpent. This is the 13th constellation that we see in the sky, known as Ophiuchus. It is the, the man wrestling that great dragon, that snake. The feathered, plumed snake. If the Mayans were here, every mythology, every religion, all of them are coming together and it's saying one thing. It's lights out. It's lights out for the corrupt system that's been in place. It's an end. And a new day is here. But oh, woe to the earth and the inhabitants of the earth, because the devil has come down upon you. The final boss is here. A lot of people know that the first time Christ was crucified and then he rose again. You, you know, he didn't raise, he didn't raise his voice. He loved, he forgave. Now a lot of people think that when Christ comes again, not returns. Because the scriptures say very clearly that Christ and God, they never left us, nor did they forsake us. But there is a coming again, that word in Greek, to come again. When Christ comes, erkame, it means to be manifested again. That which has been hidden and buried in a grave called you. Revealed. It's a revelation. That's what the book of Revelation is all about. It was the revelation of Jesus Christ to John. And now, it's all coming together. So, do you think it's interesting that we have such a strange event happening during this eclipse? It's not the only thing that's interesting, because at the same time, which by the way, news just came out about the Devil Comet. And I know you all are really excited about the Devil Comet, because of course, it's... um. It's something that I have uh, really talked about quite a bit ever since we had that devil, the devil stone that opened up, the killing stone in Japan, where they had that belief that Satan was, was trapped for a thousand years in this rock, in this stone, but then the stone was opened. And then in Japan, everybody was worried about bad, hard times coming. And we understood that we were going to enter a time where the devil's loosed. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, the people that are not doing right. It's going to be a hard time. God is going to make a way, though, in the end, for those that are doing the right thing, the Israelites. And I have more proof of that in all the things that we're going to talk about. It's all being laid out. There's a new day, a new horizon, a new earth, and a new heaven that is upon us. You know, there's a word for that. It's called Nova. It means new. And do you know, at the same time that we have the devil comet, the same time that we have Apophis being launched, the same time that we have an eclipse that is hitting Nineveh, 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 rapture, Jonah, and it's the story is so in our face. At the same time, we may also see something huge, something that hasn't been seen for a long time, something that only is seen once in about 88 years or so. A new star is about to be birthed, and it's going to be so big that you're going to be able to see it. You're going to be able to see it between now and about September and October. This is very strange. While people are in the movie theaters and they're excited for the movie Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And we hear about Beetlejuice possibly going supernova. There's actually a supernova that Hubble Telescope witnesses. It's going to give out a cosmic light show, the likes of which we have not seen. 
And my goodness, it is going to be stunning. A new star. But not just a new star. Because astronomers had previously discovered this binary. Two. Twins. Oh, you got to stick with me on this one. You got to watch this show. You got to share this show. You better. We got over a thousand people already here. Hi, how oh, it makes me so happy. You got to hit that like. We got to get the energy going. We got to get more people here because I'm telling you the cross is here. Now, let me tell you what the name of these binary stars that are going supernova, right? That something's going to happen. Weavers knows. Weavers excited. In the super chat, thank you very much. There's a name for these binary stars, and it's called Tau. You know Tau, the Tau cross. You know Tau, the eleventh one one son of Elon Musk, which is also the same word for the Tav, which is at twenty two. Ooh, it's getting exciting. The same T that the Trumpster wears on his chest. And my goodness gracious, people think that he's coming. And he is coming. This is something I said was going to happen. Nobody comes unless the Lord ordains it. And today, on the eve of Easter, which many people consider to be a very, very holy thing. I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of how we got the name Easter. Doesn't matter. But by the end of the show, you're going to find out what the resurrection is. You're going to find out what the coming again is. You're going to find out what Christ is up to in your life and in the world. And I think it's going to be really, really, it's going to be like, think blockbuster. That's what I got to say. So this new star is being born. New. Nova. That word sounds a little interesting. Because the whole thing that's happening right now in the Middle East is based on a music festival named Nova. New. And this is an exhibit that is now going to be coming to New York City of all places. What are the odds of that? What are the odds of that? But here's the good news. A dead star will soon rise again and spark a once in a lifetime display in the Earth's skies. This once in a lifetime explosion of the system will give it the appearance of a new star shining briefly before fading away for another 80 years. Behold, God does a new thing. A new thing. Change, baby. Who feels it? Smash that like we got 1111 watching right now. I said, who feels it? Turn to 1111. I feel it. Should have wore the I am a witness. If you want to get any of the merch description of the video, of course. A lot of these things happening. Now, all the big talk right now is about CERN, which we know. If you know anything about it, it's one of the the uh, the, the colliders, the, the large Hadron Collider, which they've they're making a much bigger one. But back in the day, right around the eclipse last time, there was another one of these things. A lot of people think that it's connected to a lot of things. I've posited, that means I've put forth the idea. I just like to use big words so that I sound like I know what I'm talking about. I posited the idea that what if they're not like, you know, they're supposed to be opening dimensions and opening portables and all this stuff. This is what they're supposed to be doing and they said that they've done. Maybe we'll open something out, somebody will come out. Maybe something will go in. They're looking for energy sources. They're creating black holes. All of this is like literally the news. It's true. Or supposedly, that's what we read about. But I posited the idea. What if they were trying to like move us over to another dimension because something was coming our way? On X, I almost said, hey, I bet you after that eclipse, I bet you that there can be a lot of new Mandela effects. But I'm just joking around because, once again, I'm a writer. I don't know what I'm talking about. But think about that for a second. They say that it's opening up and firing up again on the night of the eclipse. This place, which is built on the temple for Apollyon. Apollyon, which has the key to the bottomless pit. 
a bottomless pit, which some could say is a black hole. A black hole sun, if you listen to Soundgarden, is something that messes some stuff up. And you're going to see how that's all connected, too. But the same time this is happening, the same time we got the nemesis of Ra, three rockets going up before, during, and after, we got the eclipse where they got so many warnings and, oh, it's going to be terrible. So many schools are closing. Right here where we are, it's going to be 88%. We're going to be able to see like 88% of it. Which is cool. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. You got to do it too? You should tell me in the comment section. In the, in the comment section, let me know. Do you have a plan? You know? Are you, are, are you in the path of the eclipse where they're going to say there are going to be so many people there? They're worried about emergency services and everything else. Everybody's getting everybody so panicked. I'm not here to panic you. I'm here to get you excited. I'm here to get you excited because this eclipse is something that I've been waiting for personally for a long time. Following that eclipse, 22 days later, I believe, is it's a uh, it's called the Passover. So is the angel of death going to pass over the lights of Israel? All of you, those that are, I believe so. I believe so that we see a story playing out. We see all the stories playing out at the same time. And at the same time that all of this is happening, we have massive explosions that are going to be witnessed the night of the eclipse of all things. Strange. Strange that we have so many things in the sky that we can see may be able to see the devil climbing. These rockets going up. There's so many things that we could see. Now the sun, we may be able to see these massive coronal mass ejections. And you know me on the show. I say, superpowers, baby. That's what I say. Superpowers. Massive explosions may be visible on the sun during the April 8th solar eclipse. Now, if you're in the path of totality for this eclipse, you're going to experience the darkness for a few seconds, maybe minutes. But you also see around the diameter of the sun, these gigantic eruptive prominences that look like what? Twins, monoliths, pillars. This is almost too much for me to contain myself because the pillar I'll make you a pillar in the temple of the Lord very interesting a lot of people haven't even begun to cover this yet but we got CERN supposedly firing up a lot of people say that they create these stargates portals and at the same time that we're talking about CERN testing the world's most powerful particle accelerator again during April's solar eclipse to search for invisible matter. Do you know what they're actually talking about recently? Ghost particles. A phantom particle has been discovered. A fourth dimensional, never knew it was there to begin with. We exist on three, three dimensions, but this is the next dimension up. It's like they're calling it a ghost particle. So they're, this is a very big deal. So they're firing this machine up again to search for this ghost in the machine. I quite remember when Jesus appeared after his resurrection, going to the disciples and having to calm them and say, I'm not a ghost. Flesh and blood is not a ghost. Something's going on, and I'm telling you, I'm excited. So during the solar eclipse, while they're going through this search, everybody is freaking out about this, Peggy Evans. Peggy, who's, who's on board with superpowers, so am I. What's the, great, what's the greatest power of all? Love. Love, you put your faith in God. There's the one thing I teach my children. I say, God forbid I'm ever gone. God forbid. Because I, 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 I take care of my family. I love my family so much. I say, one thing you got to put your trust in the Lord. Don't go to man. 
Don't let them tell you what God is. Don't go to other people. Go to God. Pray with them. Teach me. And do to others as you want done to yourself. You put your trust in the Lord, you will always be okay. More than okay. And we're going to find this in the coming days. Because it's going to get pretty un... un it's not going to be pretty for a lot. It's going to get pretty for some. Not pretty for everybody. But it's, be, it's definitely stressful. But if you saw my last live stream on the eclipse, you know that I have a strong feeling because everybody's talking about Jonah eclipse, Jonah eclipse, Jonah eclipse. But you remember what happened. The worst that happened was Jonah, the gourd that was sheltering Jonah was taken away. You shelter, you know, maybe, maybe we need to move like Israel when they were set free from Egypt. What did they have to do? They didn't worry. When the power went out in Egypt, they had their light. What do they have to do? They, they had to take all the gold that Egypt gave them and they had to cross that Red Sea. Now, I've been talking about the Red Sea quite a bit on the show for a long time. I said, look at the Red Sea. Long before there was trouble in the Red Sea and now you've got the Russian fleet in the Red Sea. Did a video a long time ago where I talked about Jehu. This guy wasn't a great guy, but he comes in and he wipes out. He wipes out all the, uh, you know, all the Nabonidus or the, uh, the, the crazy people that were in charge at the time. Jehu comes in and he gets rid of Baal. He gets rid of all of the worship of Baal. He, he tricks them all. Ahab and the bunch. It's a very interesting story. So now we got him coming into the Red Sea with a big fleet. And everybody's worried for that 111 WW. Three rockets. 111. 111, what does it mean? Got Charles the King, the third, one, one, one. Pictures of his hands looking decrepit. Royal families falling apart. Music icons being revealed to be the worst. Stuff everywhere is coming to light, like I said. 2023 to 2024, if they be corrupt, because Christ is bringing an end to the American nightmare just like The Rock did the other night on WWE. It's going to be an interesting time. Well, at the same time that we're talking about the, uh, the Stargate and we're, you know, we're really hammering this point home that maybe they're trying to open something up. Maybe they're trying to do something. We find that Microsoft and OpenAI, because, you know, that these, this, this two group, get them together, that's, that's, that's trouble. That's trouble. They're putting $100 billion into this Stargate, Stargate AI supercomputer. Stargate, Stargate. Remember the show Stargate? They're thinking of doing a season one, one, one. Portals are being opened. That's why if you look at the uh, thumbnail, I let you know, listen, if you're new, I, I enjoy making the thumbnails. I kind of want to tell the story in just one, one picture. And I hope that I actually can get that across. We have a lot of people here. Do me a favor, will you? Uh, take a moment to just X out a chat and just hit the like button so we can get even more. I would love, I would love to get 2,222 people in here today. Can we do that? Can we do that? Because the final boss is about to come on the scene. You know, when you're playing video games, you have all these bosses that you face, but the final boss before you win the game is like the hardest of all. The final boss is uh, it's a tough one. And it seems that we're hearing a lot about the snake from Trump's poem, the snake, which he reads time and time again. Sure, he's going to do it soon. Again, he loves to uh, break that poem out to Apophis, Ra's nemesis. All of these things are strange. All of these things are strange. But if not for the fact that we have something moving on in, you know, over the years I've covered a lot of the, we'll say the astronomical stuff. In fact, the video that went viral for me and got this channel, got me to where I am now, because for years I was sharing. 
I share videos all the time. I just put up a video from the crucifixion that, uh, that you know, if, if you're following me on X, you'll see it there or you'll see it in the community section. You have to be subscribed for all that. You should also check to make sure you're subscribed because a lot of times people get unsubscribed. It's not like a, I don't think it's like a devious thing against me. I think it's just the way the system works. You know, if somebody's not active enough, they, they imagine that that person doesn't want to watch you anymore. So they get rid of you. So, so if you're here now, make sure you're subscribed. Check the bell for notifications. You can also sign up for X. It's uh, Jacob Israel 71. I post there a lot. Patreon, you know, I, I post there a lot. All the stuff, you get little sneak peeks of things. All the stuff in the description of the video below. Don't be left behind, especially now. But we got all these issues. You know, we have so many different near-Earth asteroids coming by. It's, it wasn't like this in the past. Now, what their, their explanation for this is, well, we didn't have such great documentation of it. So it could have always been like this. But if you look at the, if you look at like, we'll say the area around the Earth from, we'll say these near Earth asteroids to today, huge. We got a body problem. We got a problem with astronomical bodies. And at the same time, we have this problem that we see because a lot of people think, myself included, that there is another, you know, because we're part of a binary system. Most, most suns are part of a binary system. Here we see a new star being birthed, binary system, the tau, the tav, the, the cross, the x, the 22. What are the odds? Strange. What are the odds that right now CERN is running what CERN is running and they found this phantom particle? This phantom particle that the uh, synchrotron revealed, which is really something, really something to actually think about. Because if you, let me just read this to you. Because you know what it, they call it? They call it an entity. They don't even, an entity. The entity resides in a realm known as phase space. Phase space? What the heck is phase space? Could it be another name for what you might call heaven? It's another dimension. One that we have not seen before. One that hasn't been opened up. The portal hasn't been opened up yet. But the door is open now. You hear what I'm saying? Tell me in a live chat. The door is open now. The 4D phantom in CERN's super proton synchrotron revealed by scientists. This is a um, stressful thing. And you look at the center, you'll see a picture of how it exists as more than one thing. But really, that looks like the meta logo, does it not? That looks like the Ouroboros, does it not? The Ouroboros which is the snake eating its own tail, which is a little bit like Apophis. Weird, but it gets weirder, it gets weirder. I'm talking like demon face weird. I covered this just recently. Did a show on the demon face, if you haven't seen it, people are starting to see this. I got a little freaked out, true story. I was at the gym and I was working out and some guy had a really bad some guy had a really bad facelift. I mean, it was bad. It was like Joan Rivers bad. If you go look at a picture of Joan Rivers from before she passed away, she kind of looks like these demon faces. But I thought to myself, oh my God, am I starting to see beyond the veil? Because what people heard about these demon faces that were taken off, that everybody was freaking out about, well... Some people said, well, maybe something's happening with the eclipse. Maybe the veil's being taken away. We're going to see the demons in real life. We're going to see the demons crawling behind the eyes of the people that are here. Or we're going to meet the aliens. <laughs> this is all fact. People believe this stuff. Fourth Musketeer on X. He reached out to me. Because I shared this thing on the demon face. And if you don't know what the demon face is, it's an ultra wear distorter. And it's called PMO. Makes people look like they're demonic. 
which some people say, well, that's convenient because at the end, you'll be able to tell between the sheep and the goats, the wheat and the tares. You know who's burned first, by the way? It's not the wheat. They're not poofed away. It's the tares. They're gathered and they're burned. They're burned away. The lies that we believe are, are going to go bye-bye. We have this ultra-rare disorder. And Fourth Musketeer tells me, Soundgarden. Do you remember that song? He says, Black Hole Sun. Great song. Song that many would argue changed music. Black Hole Sun. As they're singing and you see like something that looks like an eclipse, but it's really like an eclipse of the sun or a sun being sucked into a black hole. Weird things take place during that video. This is from like 1999. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm, I'm watching you go by. There's a lot of people here. Brenda, I appreciate that. It's very generous of you. I don't know. Do you know, Brenda, do you know uh, Soundgarden? Do you know this video, Black Hole Sun, where they're playing the guitar and then they're going into this town. You see people saying the end is near, the end is near, and you got a lot of weird stuff going on. Some of the weird stuff you got going on is people's faces are turning to like demons. Freaked a lot of people out. Demon faces in the video. And I thought that was strange. But there's another scene when they're looking up and it looks something, but they're staring. So I'm thinking, oh, you got the demon faces, you got the skaters, you got all this stuff happening. Same time from 1999. As if maybe perhaps they knew we'd have a three-body problem too. What's a three-body problem? Three-body problem in this Netflix series, let me just pull this over, is, you know, they exist in, um, you know, we'll say a universe that's very unstable and they want to get the heck out of there. Isn't that right, Infinite Love? You don't want to be in an unstable place. So I don't want to ruin the, uh, the movie for any of you or the, uh, the series because it's a really great series. You should probably watch it, but it has to do with these three sons. But here we have something going on too. We have three bodies coming up. We've got the moon, we've got the sun, and we got the earth we got a whole lot of other visitors and a lot of other things happening at the same time. But really, the three-body problem that we have is the flesh, the soul, and the spirit. And that's a problem that's going to be resolved. Or so I believe. But these demon faces, spooky with Soundgarden. Not something that I thought that, um, you know, was a little too late when I heard about it. You know, I was already on to the other stuff. How many people heard about this bridge? Another symbol. This is another, a little, I call it a proof of the fact that America is, you know, going to be judged. Supposedly, this was a nation that was founded on the beliefs of God. Supposedly. And it flourished and it thrived and it became great. A lot of people say that this is that new Israel, if you will. I mean, I live in a place where Babylon's right down the street. You know, I have so many other, so many, so many of the biblical places around. I lived in a place called Sa Sachem, which is uh, the English word for Shechem. How weird is that? Jacob did too. All of these things happening, it's quite interesting. So when a bridge gets hit by a ship, which by the way, the ship, a lot of people pointed out, had the 33 on it and also had the Crusaders cross. The Crusades, something that I said years ago that we were entering into, that there was probably a silent war going on. This is the part of scripture where the beast system comes against the harlot system. And boy, do we see that now. Come hell or high water, God's going to get you. God's going to get you. You know, you, you may not be able to outrun a uh, diet. You certainly can't out, uh, like, you know, you can't outrun uh, a bad diet in the gym. I, you know, if I don't eat right, it doesn't matter how much I work out. But you certainly can't outrun God. This bridge, of course, I did that video with the container ship and all of the symbolism with Dali and the fact that he was known for the broken bridge. But he was also known for the white lion. That's his sketch right there. And a lot of people pointed out that this was connected to the whole thing that happened with the Obamas leave the world behind film 
Now, perhaps, perhaps all of this stuff that's happening, perhaps it's all pre-programmed. Well, I would say it's definitely pre-programmed, but man may make these plans and may think that they know what they're doing and may think they got it all figured out, but God is the one who orchestrates everything. You could think you know where you're going. God's going to get you there one way or another. Look what happened to Jonah. He didn't want to come out and do what, what God told him to do. He wanted to go the opposite direction. He ended up in hell, literally suffering until he decided to do what God called him to do. If you're not going to love, you are going to find yourself in hell yourself. And I'm not talking about like some you know future thing. I'm talking about in your waking life right now. Jonah prayed. He prayed out of the belly of hell. That was the great fish symbol of great carnality where there's nothing but suffering down there. And what happens? Get vomited out onto the shore. Right? Because just like just like a dog, if a dog returns to his vomit, he's not the best dog. You know? Jonah didn't want to do the same thing again. So what did he do? He told everybody, you better repent. You better repent. You better repent. And they did. They did. And what, you know, what do they do? He, he calls for a fast. I explained this in the last show. It wasn't about that. What God wanted was what they did there. They turned from their wicked ways. That was it. People like, you know what? I could be a better husband. I could be a better wife. I could be a better son. I could be a better daughter. I could be a better friend. I could be a more tolerant neighbor. I could be a more tolerant person. I can do these things. I can encourage and lift people up when they're hurting and not mock them when they're down. Enough people do this. What does God do? He saves them. God said, if... There were like 50 people. Abraham said, what about 50? Would you save Sodom? 50, 50 people that are righteous. I'll, I won't do it. What about 25? 25 people I'll do it. Can we get 25 people here? Can we? I don't want to see terrible things happen. I want to see people put through the ringer so that they stop being dummies and they stop hurting other people. Right now, what's happening, it may be a big show. Right, Cass? Cass says, black hole sun. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. What I mean, maybe, maybe, or maybe not. Maybe all of this stuff is not like some big, some big psyop. The story to me is pretty interesting. But the fact that we had two birds that disappeared when everybody was talking about this bridge, you all see this. Now, there are a lot of explanations on why this can happen. You see this bridge over here? Let me just pull this up for you. Um, make sure that it's muted. So this was the uh, the bridge, and then there were these two birds, and they flew up. I slowed it down, and then they just poof, they just vanish. They just poof, they just vanish. And then in the actual feed, what happened was they went to another shot. Some people are saying it could be a loop. You know, they could just be like one of these things where, you you know, they, they film a certain amount of footage and then they just loop the footage from a lockdown camera. Now, that is a very valid explanation instead of saying that the birds entered a stargate. But what if they did? What if they did? This just hit me now. You got to listen to this. What if the reason they knocked the bridge down is that's where one of the portals opened up. They knocked the bridge down because they didn't want people poofing into the other place. That's a story. I'm going to write that movie one day, but we don't need to because we're already in it. Do you think? Let me pull that up again. Let me play this. Do you think? Do you think that could be it? We're talking about portals. We're talking about stargates. Is it possible they knocked the bridge down? Because it looks like the birds are flying right over that place. Right over to place where the bridge was knocked down. Looks like an accident. They turn the lights off and they, they make a hard right. Next thing you know, listen, I'm just talking out of my, out of my, uh, my butt right now. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just as, um, I'm just as my boys say, you're waffling. You're waffling. You don't know what you're talking about. You're sounding like you do, but you, I don't know what I'm talking about. But is it that far-fetched? You know, there was a time when, when you could say to somebody back in the day, one day you'll have a supercomputer in your hand and you'll be able to talk to somebody else and look at them and everything else. And they're like, we don't even have electricity. You're crazy. Faith, everything is possible with faith. 
and it's not too far-fetched. It's not too far-fetched. In the end of days, there are a bunch of things that supposedly happen, that they come to light, and we may hear of freaky things happening today, in the coming days, especially leading up to this eclipse and following. And it may freak you out. Freaked me out in the beginning until I started to get this overwhelming sense of peace about the whole thing. Like, this is just going to be okay. The corruption that's been in place, the bad stuff that's been in place, it's going to be hammered down in such a horrible way. I told you this was going to happen. There's footage going around on social media. I'm not going to explain it too much. But supposedly somebody, you know, um, killed the daughter of somebody and then the mob mobbed the person because I guess the law just wouldn't handle it. So what, what happens is then whatever's behind that algorithm, you know, just... It shares it out to everybody. So everybody gets to see this because justice is coming. If not, the corrupt system, if the corrupt system's not going to shut it down, it's going to be shut down come hell or high water. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The devil's come down to you. What do you think the devil has planned? It says that in the end, that the, the, the queen of the South, Lilith, is going to rise up with this generation. Lilith, smack dab in the middle of Times Square on 6-6-2023. And what is Lilith? The queen of the night demons, according to the scriptures. Oh, according to the scriptures. Hey, Ant, you're back from work. I'm live, buddy. Oh, no, that's okay. Hope you did awesome today. That's, that's Tone. That's Tone. He's back from his job. He's training at a new job. We're so proud of him. But in the end, in the end, it's the vultures. The vultures gather. Do you remember I did that video, Prophecy Alert, where you have the, you see the vulture in there? And in that video, which had Kanye, it had Bieber, and it had Manson in it, all pretending to be prophets, I said, it's going to be revealed. I said, and I called them vultures. And that's what he names his album? I mean, this is, um, this is very, <laughs> this is very encouraging to me. Because a lot of people aren't going to think that this is something that is... You know, this, I didn't know. I didn't know. What, what we do is we get inspired. We get an idea. This is how you listen to the Lord. The Lord speaks in a still, small voice. Still, small voice. Not loud and scary. The days that we're in, according to Scripture, are so terrifying and so terrible. And I haven't even gotten to the WrestleMania stuff yet. Ooh, this is where it gets good. In those days, if they hadn't been cut short, no one would survive. What does that tell you about the day we're in? But for the sake of who, everybody? The elect. These days are going to be short. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there is the Messiah, don't believe it. What are people waiting for? They're waiting for Jesus to return as lightning in the clouds, riding a white horse, Splitting the earth in two, standing on the sand, standing on the sea. This is the way Christ is going to return. The instant, in a twinkling of an eye, the whole world is going to know, how does this happen? Well, Jesus is saying, if they say, there he is, don't go. Now, why is that? Because the resurrection of Christ and the coming again of Christ is, is much more interesting. It is much greater than just one. Because in Christ, there are many members. Could you imagine being that virgin who had trimmed their lamps and was ready to go and listened and said, I'm going to be better. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to put my faith in God because you know what? This system is a mess. Day before Easter, we hear about this declaration of what March 31st is going to be from here on forward. And it's going to send people into a hissy fit. And me, I don't care. I care about the day when Christ comes. And that's the day we're in. That's the day we're in. In that day, they'll say, look here or look there. Don't believe it. Many false messiahs and false prophets will appear They'll perform great signs, make people hear, 
make people move a mouse with a controller, and wonders to deceive, even if possible, the elect. Now see, I'm telling you this ahead of time, Jesus said. So if anyone tells you there he is, out in the wilderness, don't go out there. Here he is in the inner rooms, in the secret societies. Don't believe it. For as lightning that comes from heaven from the east is visible even to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. So will the revealing of the Son of Man be. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures gather. And immediately after those days, immediately after the vultures album is dropped, the false prophets praying on dead people, but a dead new star is about to be birthed again. Hmm. The sun is darkened after the vultures, and the moon doesn't give her light. The stars will fall from the sky, hmm, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Perhaps a three-body problem indeed. That's the day we're in. That's the day we're in. Is there any denying that? You tell me. You tell me. You tell me if right now God isn't going to be victorious. You tell me right now if God isn't going to stand up. You know what they say? They say in the end, when the Israelites, when the witnesses of God shine, right? And who's a witness? Jesus said, I want you to be my witnesses in the world. A witness is somebody who's seeing what we're seeing. And is telling everybody, behold, the day of the Lord is here. And it's now. But for those that aren't listening, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Now, the final boss is here. And his name is The Rock. The final boss, The Rock, who is a symbol for Christ, scourges the American nightmare. Look at the pictures on the bottom. I didn't want to show any of the video because, really, the WWE is so incredibly tough on that. You know, you show even, like, stuff that's in the background. And, uh, you know, it's uh, they really have the uh, the corner on how to make sure nobody can use their content. But if you take a look at The Rock, he's got two harps on his back. Do you know in the book of Revelation, that's what they play? The sound of harpists playing their harp. And it's joy. That's what the harp is. David played the lyre. He played the harp. Joy. You got two harps on the back of the rock. You know what else you got? You got a bunch of butterflies. Told you the worm was turning. Very interesting. Very interesting to see the final boss. Who's the final boss? Who's the final judge? I want you all to tell me who the final judge is. It's Christ. So here he, we see him literally scourging the American nightmare. That's Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes. The son of the American dream, country that was dedicated to the Lord, supposedly. That's what they say. Flourished. Was the American dream. Gave birth to the American nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes, the rock... He comes in. Remember, we talked about this. I actually made I made a prediction about this a couple of uh, years ago, a couple of, a little while ago. I actually on April third doubled down on that. 2023. If you look to the right of the screen, you'll see the Trumpster wearing the tav on his chest. I said, place your bets. Roman reigns. After a thousand days of victory, after defeating a nation's favorite son, Cody Rhodes, on the third day, will Cody be victorious? Like Christ rising from the dead. Is Cody Rhodes 
going to get that title after WrestleMania 39. It's going to be WrestleMania 40. WrestleMania 40, do you know when it's taking place? Hmm, this is interesting stuff. It's taking place the day before the eclipse. And look at that bell. What does that bell signify to you? When you're looking at that, what does that bell signify to you? Would you say that perhaps it signifies independence? Do you think that perhaps it signifies a new kingdom being set free from the one that has enslaved it for so long? Trump's holding that bell, too. So The Rock came in. If you don't know the story, he's a wrestler. If you don't know the weirdness that somehow I'm connected to all this because I used to work for WWE. How did this happen? I'll tell you. <laughs> Poor kid with nothing. Ended up going to the same school as Shane. He was older than me, but I worked at the local deli. Everybody kind of knew me. I was like kind of a, a kid who had like you know, bad, bad acne and... You know, I was the actor in, in the area and well, I was working at a place and I was selling orthopedic furniture and Shane needed something to, for his back. I actually sold Ivanka Trump a pillow. How weird is that? Ivanka Trump, Jacob, sells a pillow too. Jacob, who's known for Jacob's pillow, sells Ivanka Trump a pillow. <laughs> it's weird. But I end up writing for the WWE because I sell Shane this stuff at the time I was working on an independent movie with like just the most amazing artist and friend of mine his name's John Doria one day you're going to all meet him I'm trying to get him out trying to bring this artist out so that the whole world could see this guy he directed the first movie that I ever wrote and I was in it played a character who was uh, not so great you know how I, the character dies in a movie a monolith <laughs> pops him in the eye not a month well you know the like the washington monument like an obelisk an obelisk Psh, not weird very strange my point is i got the job for the wwe because i sold them stuff and i said hey do you need writers and he goes yeah and i started sending in scripts after and then i started seeing the scripts on tv at the time vince russo was there but then Vince ended up leaving. Russo and the writing team just left. So they skedaddled. All of a sudden, they needed writers. All of a sudden, I'm being called in. And Vince liked me. And next thing you know, I'm on the plane with him. And I'm reading the Bible. And I'm creating groups called the Right to Censor. Saying how one day the world is going to see how corrupt and bankrupt this, this is. And what your family does, what you do is wrong. I'm not talking about the family as a whole. I created this group called the Right to Censor. And now Vince McMahon is nowhere to be seen. How does this happen? The Trumpster, I end up producing him twice. It's weird. So I have an added excitement about the fact that The Rock is playing the character of Christ. Playing the character of Christ. Weird. Weird. Very strange. So he ends up in WWE, and I, uh, I, I, just, I get really just so incredibly excited about it. Because I see how Roman Reigns is symbolic of the reign of Rome. The reign of Rome. Roman Reigns is the guy on the left-hand side. He's, the, he's had this title for well more than like a thousand days. He's you know, probably one of the longest title holders. I don't know. I'm not a WWE aficionado anymore. But um, this is like a big deal. And it would be a major upset if Cody won. But what happened was The Rock came in and, and somehow they changed things around. They turned it all around and The Rock was going to face Roman Reigns. And I thought, how cool is this? And I go, that must be the story. The Rock, But then I thought to myself, how's The Rock going to win the title? He's too big of a star. So there's got to be something that's going to happen. But it makes so much more sense. That Cody Rhodes is symbolic of the American nightmare. He's symbolic of the everyday guy who's become like a, just a, a terrible person. A terrible person, spiritually speaking. Has become like an, a nightmare. Jealous, you know, cocky, arrogant, rude. Needs to be a little bit humbled. Just as Jesus was humbled. He learned obedience through the things he suffered. We must learn obedience through what we suffer ignorantly. 
We wouldn't suffer if we didn't do wrong. If we did good, God says he's opened up the, the floodgates of, of blessings and peace and joy. Seek first the kingdom of God. Everything you ever wanted, you will have. But we got to learn the hard way. And it looks like the rock is helping him to learn the hard way. So he stepped out. He said, you know, I, 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 it's going to have to wait. Because really, Cody has to finish the story. His story. History. This is the story of Christ. And it needs to be finished. Now, what does Cody mean? Let's, let's take a look at the names. I think I have them here somewhere. Cody actually means to help. I believe it means to help. Yes, let me pull this up. Boom. Cody means helpful or to help. Do you know what Rhodes means? Where the roses grow. A clearing in the wilderness. I find this incredibly interesting. Because Christ says that he's going to make a way in the wilderness for you. And here we have Cody Rose facing Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Who, if you look to the right, he's got two harps. Two harps. And if you look to his the post that he put out on X, it didn't have to be like this, but now it's the only way. Now it's the only way. Didn't have to be like this. You could have come, you could have come to Nineveh and told everybody to get their act together the right way, but no, you gotta suffer. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you when the suffering's gonna end. So what ends up happening is I believe it was on SmackDown. The Rock, you know, Cody Rhodes, they get into it. And then when he's going into his van, let me just pull this up again. You can see he's it's just brutal. It's just brutal what he does. If you go to my um if you go to my X page, and once again, if you want me to follow you, some people, um, you know, some, sometimes I miss it. Just, just like when you write something, just write at Jacob, I'm following you, you know, and then I'll, I'll, I'll follow you back. And like I said, unless you're a really terrible, monstrous person, which I doubt. I don't think any of you that are watching here are like that. I think that all the people watching are here for a reason, for a moment, and this is going to give them just incredible encouragement. And also give you something to talk about next, you know, when you maybe get together on Easter. But take a look at how the final boss is spelled. It's an 11. It's very strange. The two pillars. The two pillars. You know, I got to tell you. I want, I'm going to put on this hat. Because I wanted to wear a hat and look cool. But Ethan told me not to. He told me not to. There was a I went through a hat phase for a while. I went through a hat phase for a while. And I got to tell you, I just I don't like the way my hair is looking. I feel a little self-conscious, you know? But better to, uh, better to worry about how you look than to face the final boss in the end days. I would be wearing the, uh, the I am a meatball hat, which is right there. I would be wearing that, um, which is great. Still, you can get it, so, but it's... It's, just a, it's a little hot in the studio right now. But yeah, so back in the day, here it is. And now here we have it. The final boss to rock, a symbol of Christ, scourges the American nightmare in front of his own bus, wearing two harps like an angel wings. What do you see? I put a little, put a little breadcrumb. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Well, this is what I see. I see heaven opening up. Another great and marvelous sign. This is from Revelation, by the way, in the bottom. Seven angels with the seven last plagues. Last, because now listen to this. This is where it gets interesting. Last, because with them, God's wrath. Wrath. God's wrath. It's complete. It's finished. Finished. God's wrath with it 
it's finished. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass glowing with red fire. And standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast. And who is the beast? Scripture says the beast, man does not know that they are brute beasts. The beast is that Antichrist. So that Antichrist spirit that, that John, it's written in the book of 1 John, says there are many Antichrists in the world. And so the time is now. In the end, there's going to be everywhere. A plethora of them. Just like there's going to be one much larger brood of cicadas, there will be one much larger brood of, we'll say, sinners. And a majority of them are people that maybe some people you know consider heroes. Strange. Strange to think that. But next to this sea of glass... And what is a sea of glass? It's transparent. You see, you can see everything. Those that had been victorious over the beast and its image and over the number of its name, they held harps given them by God. And what did they sing? They sang two songs. The song of Moses... Song of the Lamb. And what have I been singing on this show? What have you been singing? We've been talking about the Song of Moses. We've been talking about the Song of the Lamb. This is the day we're in. They said clear on set when the rock was done. That bloody in him. It was like, really, it was terrible. It was like a bloodbath. Such a terrible beatdown. And the rock said, no. Just because we're off the air doesn't mean I'm done. It's not finished until I say it is. It didn't have to come to this. Do you see what I'm saying? Wouldn't it be better if people just repented? Wouldn't it be better if people just got their stuff together? Stop with the nonsense? Wouldn't it be better? Let me tell you. Tomorrow, people are going to talk about Easter, the resurrection. Now, once again, don't get hung up in you know, what the holiday, where it comes from, where it stems, why people are picking up eggs, or whether or not you can, you can, you can get, uh, have a little you know, chocolate bunny, or if that's idolatry, idolatry. Let me tell you, don't get into that stuff. Paul, Paul said it very clearly. You know, Paul went in and he ate meat sacrificed in temples to like idols. He would eat dinner there with meat that was sacrificed to the false gods. He didn't have, because he knew that it was nonsense. He knew the only thing that mattered was love. To love God, to love others. Jesus said, if you do these two things, not if you don't eat this or you don't eat that, you don't eat a lobster, you don't eat pork, you eat lobster and shrimp, it's an abomination. Strange. But tomorrow, instead of getting hung up in the day, the story, that day, that Sabbath rest that we're supposed to end to, it's, it's our day. And see, the problem is people don't even know how... Christ really comes and what that day is going to look like and what it actually might mean. They have no idea. They're confused about the whole thing because people have taught everything wrong for so long. I'm just going to blow this up a little bit and I'm going to read this to you, okay? Because I want to, I want, I want to really just point this out because a lot of people, you know, they think they know scripture. They think they know the Bible. They think they know this and that. They know what they've been told. Now, the good news is I'm not even going to say you even need it because, you know, before (laughs) Jacob didn't have a Bible, Abraham didn't have a Bible, Isaac didn't have a Bible, Moses didn't have a Bible, Abraham didn't have a Bible. None of these guys, right? They didn't have a Bible. What did they have? They had a covenant. They had a relationship with God. I use the scriptures. I love the scriptures because this is how I understood things, right? Right? I use it because if religion is going to form their basis of understanding and their doctrine on this book, God has given me the ability to take this book and actually really study it and look and seek to lead people out. Show them the spiritual meaning in the 66 books, the duality of man, the twins. How crazy, right? Well, this is what Jesus said the day would be like when he comes. Don't let your hearts be troubled. 
You believe in God. I want you to believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and I will take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. People have taken this out of context for years and twisted it. How are you going to say you don't know me? If you know me, you know my Father. This is what people should be saying of us. How are you going to say you don't know Christ? Do you know Jacob? Have you not? No, because if you know Jacob, you know the love of Christ too. Do you understand how this works? This is what it means to be the body of Christ. If people can't come to us and know God, there's a problem. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, I'm going to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you will be also. Now, where are you right now? Where Christ is right now. Hmm. Could it possibly be that the place he's preparing is in the Father's house, which the scriptures say is you? Is Christ literally preparing a place for you that where Christ is, righteousness, peace and joy and hope and power and Holy Ghost, that you could be there too? And that's the day that's approaching. Now, let me finish this. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after all I have been among you, I've known you for so long. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe? This is the key. That I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words I say to you, I don't speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who's doing the work. This is where it gets interesting. Because he's trying to get people to believe what he's saying. Because people won't believe it. He's saying, believe me when I say, I'm in the Father. And the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Because I'm telling you the truth. Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. I'm going to do the same thing. And they will do even greater things than these. The question is why? His answer is because I'm going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. But as of yet, you haven't asked me anything. As of yet, you haven't asked for the truth, no matter what the cost. I will do anything you ask of me. But as of yet, what's the problem? Where's the disconnect? If you love me, here's the key. Keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you. And be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him, because you can't, you can't find him if he's in the field, right? Nor knows him. But you will know him, for he lives with you and will be where, everyone? In you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. 
but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize, now here's the key, everyone. I'm in the Father, and you're in me, and I'm in you. Whoever has my commands, love God, love others, and keeps them, is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas said, Not Iscariot, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replies, because this is how Jesus shows himself. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. The Father will love him. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. You are not my own. You are not those who belong to the Father who sent me. This is what it means. This is what the whole thing's about. This is what it'll be like when Christ comes again. It's going to be a bad time for the people that don't obey his commands. Love God, love others. If you just asked. All right. I hope that this got you excited. All of this stuff is working together for the good. We've had a lot of people here. I had a great time. I'm super excited that you're excited for the days to come. I hope you are at least. You got to tell me in a live chat if you, um, yeah, tell me what you thought of the show. You got to leave me a comment and everything else. You got to share and subscribe. You got to get yourself some truly free home. 50 loads. This is going away for free. This is like a little contest. <laughs> truly free home, by the way, they're like being advertised every day. They're just on like the Today Show, I think. All non-toxic stuff. They're the sponsor of my show, friend of the channel, an Israelite of Israelites. Stephen is a wonderful man. Um, 50 loads. You got to use code Jacob. It's called Starter Kit. Get you started. And it helps me out and everything else. I would love for you all to get a copy of the novel. But I should show you this because somebody wrote something that was so nice. Um... Let me see if I can still pull this up. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah, someone wrote this. This is nice. Uh, T wrote this. If, you like, if you're like me and tired of the same old story in movies and books, you should really check out Jacob's novel, The Calling. Only the second book I've ever read, all the way front to back, because I normally get bored or want to skip to the end. But this story keeps your attention. That really, that just really made my, uh, that made my day. So, you know, of course... There's like over a thousand reviews for um, the novel. Here's here's one just recently from Trish. This is um, in my novel. It's my life's work. It really is a uh, really is. I mean, it really is something that um, I felt like. I feel like it's going to be even bigger. I feel like this this is going to be the year because you know from what I understand, this movie that I'm in, this Mandela Effect movie, it's coming out in uh, this, I, June, right before my birthday, I believe. And um, if, if it is what I think it could be, maybe a lot of people are going to buy this novel. It would be great if you get it now, though. Um, there's not going to be an audiobook. Not that I'm aware of. I'm not thinking of doing one. Something about having a literal copy for the days to come. You might want to keep it. You might want to highlight it. You know, make some, uh, make some notes. There's a lot of stuff in there. My whole life and heart went into this book many, many moons ago, and it was written for today, and here it is. So, trulyhomefree.com slash starter kit. Code Jacob, 50 free loads. Go to Amazon.com. Type in The Calling by Jacob Israel. You'll find me. Leave a review. You got over a thousand five-star reviews. You can read them and you'd like it. I love all of you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Happy Easter to those that celebrate. And um, have the best day ever. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Tell your friends about the channel. Goodbye.